high insulin and small dense LDL would might be part of the same uh, uh, phenomenon. You make a list of the things, the physiologic markers that are improved by carbohydrate restriction. You get the same list. So what, what's the risk? I mean, what, it, what is it that people are worried about? And the answer, of course, is that uh, overweight will lead to obesity. Uh, these will, uh, hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia will lead to diabetes. And there's a risk of cardiovascular disease. So the question is, how can you treat these? And obesity, there are many ways to lose weight, uh, especially if you're young. Um, We don't know about the real causes of cardiovascular disease. We know a lot about the parameters that interact, and we know the effect of carbohydrates, but in the end, we don't know what either the initiating events are or really how to treat them. There is the best way to treat diabetes. And uh, here's the pitch. The pitch is if you can show the best treatment for diabetes, and it's one that also improves obesity and cardiovascular disease. Then if metabolic syndrome is a real thing, if this is really reflecting an uh, underlying state, then it's all about common mechanisms. And then you have a default diet, because if, if all of these things are related and you have the best diet for diabetes, uh, then you have the best diet for all of them. And uh, I'll give well, one or two things, but I think Dr. Bernstein will uh, make a better case on how we have the best treatment for diabetes. Uh, this is an uh, underappreciated study, uh, well, they have many studies by Gannon and another. And what they've done is, is to take people and put them on a low carb diet in such a way that they don't gain or lose weight. So these people are weight stable, and they look at the uh, fluctuations in glucose before uh, and after uh, several weeks on a low carb diet. And you can see the tremendous uh, difference. The difference in insulin is not so pronounced, but uh, still exists. What, what's good about these studies is they're very careful workers, and they've progressively looked at 40% uh, carbohydrate, 30%, and 20%. And they said uh, that, well, you could see that 20% is the most effective level of carbohydrate for reducing uh, glucose fluctuations, even under weight-stable conditions. Uh, they backed their, uh, as I say, uh, very expert uh, researchers. They're a little bit uh, conservative, and they backed off and showed that 30% <coughs> is almost as good and more agreeable to the world out there. The cumulative uh, effect of uh, uh, continued uh, high glucose, of course, is the glycated proteins, uh, the most important of which, or the most uh, salient of which, is uh, hemoglobin A1c. So the bottom line is that there's no experimental evidence that says just what you think is true. I mean, this is really a uh, um, well. This is this is a period in the history of the world where you can uh, uh, well, common sense is out the window. Uh, you know, you can uh, pay an executive of a failed company uh, twenty million dollars, and if you can't prove that you shouldn't logically, well, then that's okay. So, uh, but common sense tells you that if you have a disease of carbohydrate restriction, you shouldn't be adding carbohydrates in the diet. Nothing has gone against this, okay? And in a, in a world where common sense reigns, the burden of proof would be on anybody who says otherwise. I don't think I'm overselling that point. So what about saturated fat? The problem with saturated fat is it comes from the idea that you are what you eat. You know, that, that the food gets packed into uh, uh, your body like a refrigerator, and that's a bad idea. Better would be uh, you are what your metabolism does with what you eat. And I'll, uh, final experimental uh, 
detail I'll show you is again from Bullock's work. And what's really remarkable here, you're looking at saturated fat in the blood. Uh, and uh, you can see that the low carbohydrate diet had a substantial reduction <laughs> in the total amount of saturated fat in the blood. What's astounding about this is that they were consuming three times the amount of saturated fat as uh, the low fat group. How is this possible? They're eating three times as much saturated fat, and saturated fat is going down. Well, that's what metabolism does. It, it transforms things. Now, part of the effect, of course, is that the total triglycerides have gone down. So that will uh, bias the whole thing. But the absolute change in metabolism, you can see by looking at the individual <coughs> response of these guys. And uh, you can see that almost all of them had a reduction in uh, the uh, total saturates and uh, uh, similarly to the low fat diet. This is the advanced course in carbohydrate chemistry. I'll run through it quickly. And it says the glucose is processed to this two carbon fragment called acetyl CoA. What insulin does is converts it to an agent called malonyl CoA, which is uh, the precursor of the synthesis of fatty acids, saturated fatty acids, palmitic acids. More advanced course will tell you malonyl CoA also prevents the utilization of the uh, any saturated fatty acid. So uh, people that haven't raised insulin are burning saturated fatty acids. Uh, the group who <coughs> raised insulin, I mean, the people who have raised insulin are not burning the saturated fatty acids. Uh, the group that's consuming more may be burning. Uh, how do you know that this is uh, what's going on? I mean, what we're saying here is that. Uh, the low-fat group is actually converting the glucose into saturated fatty acids. Well, one way you know is that it turns out that the conversion of uh, palmitic acid to uh, an unsaturated fatty acid, called palmitoleic acid, uh, is not, uh, it's not one of these uh, global processes where the uh, uh, so-called desaturase, that's the enzyme that converts saturated to unsaturated fatty acid. It's not swimming around. It seems to be closely tied to the actual uh, synthesis. Palmitoleic acid is not uh, found in high concentrations in the diet. So if you find palmitoleic acid, that's a sign that you're making your own saturated fatty acids. And if you compare these two groups, you can see that the low-fat group continues to make saturated fatty acids from uh, glucose, whereas the low-carb group has uh, significantly reduced it. Uh, finally, these are uh, uh, meta-analyses that have just come out. After years of uh, demonizing saturated fat, uh, we now have uh, a whole bunch of people say, well, let's look at the data, let's do a meta-analysis. Now, a meta-analysis is where you group together a whole bunch of different studies and you try to see if there's more information in the group uh, than there is uh, in the individual data. Um, this is a technical slide, so let me try to explain to you what you're seeing here. The hazard ratio is, is similar to what you think it is. In other words, you have a, a large group, and you ask, how many people in this group uh, improve their risk for cardiovascular disease? In this case, the endpoint is actually a cardiovascular uh, event uh, or uh, death from coronary uh, uh, artery disease. So you're looking at a time period, how many people uh, die in each group. So what you're really looking at is uh, kind of an odds ratio. Should you bet on uh, take the saturated fat out, put in carbohydrate or uh, polyunsaturated fats, or should you uh, leave it in and uh, see what happens?